Imagine it's nighttime. You're in an unfamiliar place and it's so dark you can't see anything except for some distant lights. Now imagine you had to map the area to find out how far away those lights were. If you've got nothing for reference, that's a tough ask. You think, is that light fainter than the one next to it because they're further away? Or are they the same distance but coming from different intensity light globes? It would be a whole lot easier to measure distance if you knew that light A, B and C are street lights. Especially if you know that all street lamps use the same type of light globe and have an equation where the intensity of the street lights you see helps calculate how far away they are. This is kind of what it's like for an astrophysicist like me exploring our galactic neighbourhood from Earth. This is 10 Minute Genius, and I'm going to tell you all about how I use the light emitted by stars to help us learn more about our galactic neighbourhood in under 10 minutes. While an archaeologist digs down to explore mysteries of our past, a cosmic archaeologist like myself does my digging upwards through space to illuminate the history of our universe. When we look at stars, we're looking back in time. The light we're seeing has spent a long time travelling unfathomable distances through the cosmos to our eyes. Even the light from our nearest star, the Sun, takes over 8 minutes to reach us from over 150 million kilometres away. The relationship between time, light and space is second nature to an astrophysicist, which is why we measure distance in space as light years, or the distance light travels in one Earth year. But not all stars are the same. The light in our intergalactic street are not only different distances away, but come in different sizes, chemical compositions, and stages of evolution. That's why we rely on measuring distances in space using stars that we know have a consistent spectral fingerprint. We call these standard candles, because they allow us to measure distances in the same way as if they're cosmic street lights with standard light globes in them. We know all about the light they give off, its makeup and intensity, and therefore we can more confidently measure their distance. My research is all about being able to tell our standard stellar candles from the rest, so we can use them to learn about our neighbouring galaxies. When everyone else is winding down for the night, my day is just beginning. My work involves pulling a lot of all-nighters when it comes to time to collect data. It looks a bit sci-fi. I work in a room with a lot of computer screens, and when I log on here in Sydney, I'm connecting remotely with a telescope far from the city lights in Coonabarabran. I have a list of stars I'm targeting for my research. I'm looking at two different types of stars, red clump stars and red giant branch stars. Red clump stars are standard candles, perfect for measuring distance, but they can be hard to tell apart from red giant branch stars. Both of these types of stars are at a similar stage of evolution and appear similar on the surface, but it's the inside that counts. The structure of these stars' cores is where you can sort your red clumps from your red giant branches. It's like having to peel your fruit to tell apples from oranges. Traditionally, we've relied on a field called astroseismology to help tell these stars apart so that we can map the cosmos. Astroseismology uses the light emitted from stars to allow us to tell the different types apart. Just as you can tell that glass bottles are different by hearing the pitch you get from blowing in them, you can also tell the difference between different types of stars by studying the oscillation in the light waves they produce over a long period of time. The only problem? This can take days, months, or even years at a time to do for each star. I'm a PhD student, so I don't have that kind of time. Instead, I'm trying to forge a new, faster path to identifying our cosmic street lamps. I spend all night, every night, collecting the light from red clump stars and red giant branch stars, our apples and oranges, so I can study their spectra, which tells us the makeup of the light these stars emit so we can tell them apart. If we can use this spectral signature as a fingerprint to tell us what type of star we're looking at, we could speed up our process so that it takes minutes, not years. That would also be a giant leap forward in finding our way around our galactic neighbourhood without even leaving home. And if my research makes that leap forward possible for the field, 
that would be a dream come true. Impossibly a few less all-nighters.